Hey, welcome back. In this video, just one last example on finding zero force members in trusses. Uh, this is a bit of a continuation of the last video. So we did this example on the left-hand side in the last video. If Actually, if you just want to click on this bubble up here, it will take you to that tutorial. Uh, otherwise, we'll just keep going if you haven't seen it yet. Um, so in the last video, we did have this truss with a single point load acting on it, and we identified all of these eight zero force members in it. What I want to do in this video is we have exactly the same truss, but now we're going to subject it to the same point load plus one other point load somewhere else on a different joint. And now we want to see uh, what the zero force members would be under this loading scenario. So I mentioned before in the last video that um, the zero force members really depend on the, the, the loading scenario. And if the loading changes, the members that have no forces in them will likely change as well. Okay. So we'll do the same thing. We'll just go joint by joint, looking uh, where we can easily find some zero force members. Uh, here we have two collinear forces across this joint, and this is the third one. So this is going to be a zero force member because there's nothing that's able to say there's some compression in it or something. There's nothing uh, equal and opposite to resist it. So this one has to be the zero force member. What we're going to do down here, same as we did down on the other video, is we're just going to erase uh, the members down here that are our zero force members uh, and it will just help us visually identify the the remaining members that actually have internal forces in them so um, looking at that once we are once we erase that we know it's a zero force member so if we were to draw the free body diagram of this point um, we would have some forces in these two collinear guys that are equal and opposite to each other in this third one it would have to be zero because there's nothing that's able to there's nothing that's uh, perpendicular to this line that's able to resist any amount of force component that would be perpendicular so this guy has to be zero as well uh, and notice if we're talking about free body diagrams um, the force in this erased member would be zero so it just wouldn't show up in a free body diagram and that's kind of the intent behind just erasing them like this is just to keep our own uh, just for our own reference it's not like they're not it's not like their members aren't actually there it just helps us visualize what still has forces in it all right um, looking at this joint there is two collinear members and there is this um, there's this third member that's attached to the joint there is a point load there is a load that's acting on on the other joint that this member is attached by but we're making our decision based off of this joint and there's nothing resisting this joint uh, in the vertical direction so this has to be a zero even though there's a force acting on that member on a different joint so we wouldn't be able to look at this joint same as we same reasoning as in the last video um, we can't make that decision based on this joint but based on this joint we know it has to be a zero force member otherwise this joint uh, if there's some force in here it would have the tendency to move down or up and um, this structure is in static equilibrium, so we know that that's not happening, so that force has to be a zero force member. All right, um, this one's really easy to see. There's two collinear forces, there's a, uh, two collinear members, there's a member here. Basically, this joint wouldn't be able to resist anything in there, so that guy's got to be a zero force member as well. Okay, so we'll just erase that just so we can get a better visual idea. Um, so now everything that's on the left hand side of the truss, what we have left here in this diagram, all of these members are going to have some amount of internal force in them. Okay, um, looking on this side, here we go, two collinears, one that's not collinear, that guy's got to be a zero force member as well, so we can erase it with exactly the same logic that we've been dealing with before. And now let's see what we can do, because these are going to be a little more complicated. Here we have we have four members at this joint, so we can't make any observations so quick like that. Here we have four members at this joint. We can't uh, we can't rule out anything. Here we have one, two, three, four. That's four as well. And here we have something a joint with a point load acting on it on the joint. So we can't just look and say, oh yeah, there's two there's two collinear members and the third one. So that one's going to be zero force. Um, looking at this member, there is these two collinear members. Um, but this force will have two components to it, right? So this force, uh, it'll have some component acting in this direction, and it'll also have some force acting in this direction. So in order for this, uh, this component to get canceled out, this force, uh, this member here has to take some of that. So it's actually going to be, uh, this member is actually going to be in compression and it's going to be pushing like that against that joint. So this is not a zero force member. 
because it has to counteract the component of this force that was basically perpendicular to these, these two other members. So this is not a zero force member. Knowing that this is not a zero force member, if we have some forces, uh, if we have some force in this guy, let's say maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe that's tension or something, and maybe that's also tension, they're gonna be pulling away from each other. And we mentioned that this one, we know that this was going to be compression. Well, in order to uh, balance the forces in perpendicular to these two collinear forces, this would actually have to be, uh, this guy would actually have to be in tension. Um, so that means that that is also not a zero force member. Then when we get down to here, there's going to be some internal force. I don't know which way it's going. Um, actually, it's probably going like that, but it doesn't really matter. Um, we need to, we already mentioned that this is going to have some internal force in it. Uh, and then again, to, to make sure that this joint is in equilibrium perpendicular to this line, then this has to also carry some force in it. So that is also not a zero force member. So on this diagram, the one that we did in this video, we have uh, five zero force members. And on the exact same truss, when we had a different loading scenario, so just one load acting right here, we actually found eight zero force members. So hopefully that shows that um, zero force members depend on the loading that we're applying to the structure. And, uh, and then you can also see down here, um, these are just the, the members that are actually going to have internal forces in them. It's not like we, it's not like those other uh, members that we erased don't exist. Just those ones are all zero force members. So when we go through to analyze this, um, it would make our lives a lot easier. Just looking at this diagram, it's a lot less cluttered and we'd be able to go through joint by joint if we knew what these forces were and we could actually get actual numbers for what the internal forces are in those members.